Hey everybody, welcome back to the King Kane Way. It's me, King Kane. I'm here today, and today I'm going to be giving a review over the Millennials of Dallas season three, episode three. Um, I have this nair on my body, uh, trying to get really nice and smooth all over. I have a sickening photo shoot for tomorrow, um, so I'm just getting prepared for that. Um, and like I told you guys in my last Basketball Wives review, I have to wear fucking glasses now. So I went and picked up my glasses today. I mean, they're okay. They're going to take some getting used to. Apparently, um, I can't see. So <laughs> we'll just see how that works. So um, the show opens up with Malcolm. He goes to see Risha. She's at the shop. Um, and Malcolm is going to get himself a haircut. Um, he said that he got tired of looking crazy um, and like a mop by the head. So he was pretty much just ready to go see Risha, chop it up with her, and um, get a nice haircut. I believe the name of her shop is Fifth Avenue Salon or Fifth Avenue Barber Salon or something like that. Um, she done got scammed by a website revamper. Um, I just feel like we need his name, sus. We need his Instagram name. She said he was very swaggy. He was very this. He was very that. And I'm like, bitch, tell us the name. Who was the nigga? Because it was me. Uh, it was such and such. He reached out to me. And I had this experience with him. Um, I don't think it's cool. I, you know, took the girl money. It's trifling. It's tied and through. And um, like she said, nigga, there's no need for no conversation. Let's you give me my goddamn money. And that's just what it is. Um... And then Risha just goes on to say like how she didn't feel like he was professional. He showed up at the meeting, you know, with wine and et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, it's 10 a.m. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. But, you know, you can't really tell people when to drink or when they can be able to drink. Like, you know, people do what they want to do when they want to do it, how they want to do it. Um, so, yeah, was you guys having mimosas or was he just there to like turn up with like some goddamn bottles and shit like. I need to know, like, what, what vibe was he giving? Um, I don't know. He just done lied boots to her and told her he would do this and he was going to do that. And this never came through. That never came through. So, Risha, I hope you get your motherfucking coins. If not, um, sue his ass. And shout out to Risha the barber. She always got some dudes in the shop getting cut. Um, I totally live for that. Um, at the end of the day, sue that nigga um, who scammed you, period. Um, next we see Aubrey come through fresh fade. Aubrey looks absolutely gorgeous. His skin looks amazing. His haircut looked good. The beard was lined up to perfection. Um, I totally enjoy seeing him back on, 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 on reality TV. Um, you know, uh, basically he's at the shop and, uh, JT comes and, you know, they're just sitting there having a key key. My whole thing is JT is just bringing the girls in. Um, he seems to be the connector to everyone, so okay, I get it. Um, Aubrey just talks about his struggles with the law and you know, getting on probation, having to get off probation for smoking a little old blunt. I'm so over the goddamn laws in Texas. It, like, shut the fuck up. If a nigga got a little bit of weed, who cares? I mean, you guys are blowing up the whole CBD trade. So, I mean, CBD is close to THC, so like, shut the hell up. It's really not that big of a deal. He honestly didn't have to go through all of that. I just think it was just total racism. And um, um, it's just it's just disappointing in the law. Um, but Aubrey seems to be in good spirits. He's moving forward. He's created um, a lifestyle, um, healthy wellness brand, the G-Spot, where he wants everything that feels good to be good uh, for, the, for, the, for the man, for the male. So it's dope. I'm totally here for it. Um, and he's just opening up to JT about that. Um, at the end of the day, let people smoke their weed hell. Like, period. Who really gives a fuck? Um, JT pretty much mentions that he wants to rebrand Aubrey. And, you know, he feels like um, he could really, you know, desexify some of the posts that Aubrey makes. But, you know, me just looking on Instagram and knowing social media, I don't really feel like he posts so much like naked stuff anyway. Um, I think that everyone sporadically posts a little 
come get it a little I look good, a little I'm that nigga type of pose where you're showing a little skin, showing a little body, and it's totally fine. You know, sex sells. And JT, even you said a couple episodes ago that a dude selling detergent naked is going to sell out versus a dude walking around selling detergent fully clothed. So, I mean, you should understand, you know, that sex sells sometimes. And like I've always said, you have to let people do their brand and live in their moment. Um, you know, just how, you know, you, Amir kind of wanted to work with you and do that whole type of thing. He, you wasn't really feeling that, you know. So, you know, you just want to be cautious and, you know, don't really... I don't want to say, like, don't get your hopes up too high. People be like, oh, no, I'm good. Or, yeah, or no. Or, you know, things like that. Um, he basically calls the picture spot pics. But then he goes back and says that, you know, he does that as well. He does the thing, like I just said, everyone has posted a sexy little thought pic in JT's voice. So, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I definitely think that selling sex is great marketing. Um, and I'm totally here for the G-spot. Come through. Um, next, we see Jason in his goddamn underwear in the confessional. He's in stripped underwear. Thank you, Jason. I totally appreciated that. I'm sure other people who watched the show appreciated that. Glory be to God for you. Um, Jason is just um, premiering his line at Men's Fashion Week in Dallas. Congratulations. I, I feel like that is huge. Um, that is such a phenomenal thing. Congratulations to you. Keep going. Um, it was nice to see you coming out of your shell a little bit in the confessional and just, you know, talking about your brand and how you didn't have a speech um, together. And it's just like, for me, you don't have to have a speech. You know, just talk about your brand. Talk about what it is. Um, like you did, and you did absolutely amazing. Um, and I just thought that, that was super dope that you were at um, Men's Fashion Week. Um, yes, it is a lot to be a part of the of a fashion show. I understood what you were saying when you were talking about finding the models, styling them, makeup, hair, accessories. Like, it is a lot. It becomes a lot when you're doing the show. But at the end of the day, it's it's all beautiful and it all works out. So congratulations to you. Um, and just keep going. Uh, next we see Josh, um, Joshua. Um, it's his filming day. His team is unprepared. Um, he's a little annoyed. He had to like rewrite and tweak the script a little bit. Um, there was like location issues. I, th I believe one of the actresses' scenes was supposed to be at another location, but they had to improvise, which is what life is all about. Um, they had to improvise and just like kind of move move forward. Um, he told the girls to just let loose, just act, and just let it happen naturally. She did a phenomenal job. And I just want to know, is this the same girl who was at the table reading holding the baby? Um, if so, I think she did phenomenal. Um, so congratulations with that. Um, I just think that this was just so dope just to see like the behind the scenes. And then he's a black gay man. And like you're like working for your production dream. And I think that that is super, super dope. Um, uh, yeah, so just congrats at the end of the day. That was absolutely amazing. Um, next, we're going to get into JT. He's meeting with Markel, who was on season one, and I believe a little bit of season two. Um, they're meeting at the Galleria to Kiki and just have like a conversation. Um, they discuss the whole top golf thing, and it just seems like they're both kind of going in on Amir a little bit. Um, like I said in the previous videos, JT, there has to be some other T there with you and Amir. For me, it just doesn't make sense how like annoyed and aggravated you are with him. I mean, at the end of the day, he just said, don't, you know, put his, his cards down on the table. Um, we all know that you have been being cute towards him. So it's just like, don't, you know, feel some type of way when people clock your shade. Um... I don't know. It's just, I just kind of feel like, here's my thing with the gays sometimes. We could be so superficial. You know, you guys were talking about like likes and followers and things like that. And, you know, it's quite as kept, you know, people are out here buying likes and buying followers and buying clout. Like, stay woke. You know, you just have to be honest and, and, and know these types of things. It's sort of like a faking it till you make it thing. Let's be clear. It goes on across the board. 
Um, so, and, and you know, there are some people out there who are not into that and who just want to get their likes and their followers and their subscribers, you know, the natural way. Um, so we just, again, have to allow people to do what's best for them, live in their truths, do what the fuck they want to do, and it is what it is. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's just pretty much how the scene ended. Uh, JT ended up asking Markel, has he talked to Malcolm? Um, Markel did this, like, look, like, oh, bitch, you know, mm, I don't really see it for Malcolm. Um, I believe there may be some tea there. I'm not really too much sure. I'm not really sure what happened between the two because I do know that they were on the seasons prior together and there was some type of conflict. I don't really know if there was ever a resolution. Um, but that's pretty much the review of the Millennials of Dallas season three, episode three. Like this video, uh, share this video, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments. Um, again, this is unbiased. This is just my opinion watching the goddamn show. Um, so, you know, enjoy it and gag at it. And, you know, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Uh, but I'm sure you will be watching. Um, so just fuck with me. I love you guys for fucking with me. Um, it looks like my basketball wife reviews are the ones that are like skyrocketing. So I'm totally here for that. So keep that momentum going. Goddamn me. Um, and subscribe to the channel. All right, peace, people. Mwah, mwah, mwah.